Hi guys and welcome to the ACT Science Research Summary video. So um, we're going to go ahead and start with research summary in this video. The next one will be data representation and then the one after that is going to be your conflicting viewpoints. The reason that we're doing it in that format is that each of the different types of passages is, is pretty different and so there's different things that you should be doing for each different type of passage. However, a note, some of the same types of questions will appear on two or all three of the different types of passages. So I'm going to do my best to make sure that I re-explain you know, each type of question on each video, so bear with me. There might be a little bit of repetition between these videos. However, if you're stuck on any particular type of question in one video, I highly recommend watching the next video because it also will, you know, give you more examples, more explanation of how to deal with a particular type of question. And so there will be a little bit of repetition in terms of question types, but each question type within a different type of passage sometimes has to be looked at in a slightly different way. Um, so we're dealing with passages because they don't overlap, whereas question types do. So research summary is the first type of passage that we're going to be dealing with. It is three out of every seven passages is going to be research summary. So they're, you know, one of the two most important types of science passages on the test. The idea with a research summary is that you're going to have a couple different experiments that are being run and then you're going to have results from those experiments. And your job is to, you know, analyze the different experiments, figure out what they did, why they did it, and, you know, how they did it. So that's actually going to be how you're going to approach these types of passages. Um, but we'll get into that in a second. So first off, let's just quickly cover the kinds of things that they can ask you. So the different types of questions that you will, you know, be expected to be able to answer. Okay, the first type of, type of question that they can ask you about is basically just looking at a graph, a chart, some sort of visual representation, and you're going to explain what's happening. And um, so this is like your figure interpretation question. And sometimes I like to think of these as, you know, detail questions for the science passage. So the information is in the chart, it's in the table, it's in whatever visual representation that they give you, and you just have to find it. So this would be stuff like, uh, let's say you have a chart and you're looking at uh, percentages of carbonation in different beverages. Um, so all it would ask you is something like, uh, which of the beverages that the scientist tested has the highest percentage of carbonation. So all you'd have to do is look at your graph or your chart and you know you're basically looking for the biggest number or the highest point in the graph that corresponds to carbonation. So they're you know they're not so bad you just have to be able to grab the information that it's asking you for and then look back at the chart and make sure that you can find it. It sounds really simple, and sometimes it is, but this does get a little bit more complex when the figures you're looking at are a little bit harder to understand. So in a really simple chart, this is a really easy thing to do. But they can get kind of difficult when you have a chart that it's hard to understand in the first place. So your first type, you're just interpreting the figure. This is, you know, kind of detail sorts of questions. And these will show up pretty much on every passage. They'll also show up in data representation because that's all about figures basically. Um, and you're going to see, you know, at least one on every passage that you have normally more than that. So more like two per passage. Okay. Uh, next type is when we're looking for like trends or patterns. And again, most of the time for trends questions, you're going to be looking at the tables or figures that they give you. Um, the things above it are kind of the next type, which is the reasoning 
sorts of questions. But for trends, you're again, you're looking at the table. You're saying, okay, do I see any patterns? Are there any relationships that are important? Um, they also can ask you to do a couple of things. They can ask you to plot the data that they've already given you. They can ask you to describe what is happening with the data, aka, um, they won't actually say independent or dependent relationships, but they'll hint at that. So they'll say things like, as, um, as the rate of oxygen absorption increases, the rate of carbon dioxide, um, you know, exiting the body, and then the answers will be increases, decreases, increases, then decreases, stays the same, something along those lines. So all you're doing is you're now looking at your chart and you're figuring out, okay, as one thing gets bigger, what happens to the other one? Is there a relationship? Sometimes there's not. Um, is the relationship, if it does exist, um, inverse? Is it direct? What's going on exactly? And again, they will not use any sorts of scientific knowledge in the answer choices in terms of independent variable, dependent variable, indirect relationship, that kind of thing. But the idea is exactly the same. They just word it in such a way that if you didn't take a science class, you could still answer the question. And the trickiest of this kind of question would be the new data or new variables sorts of questions. So they can give you a table and then say, you know, suppose that we took another reading on the next day, or, you know, depends on what your example is. Uh, what would happen? So if I have a decreasing level of pollution, just making up random ones, a pollution in a particular um, bay, let's say, and every day it seems like the pollution is decreasing slightly, um, you know, due to time from, you know, after a oil spill or something along those lines or wind patterns, etc. Um, so if it's decreasing, then the next day it should still be decreasing by approximately the same amount that it is consistently decreasing. So new data, basically, you're just following the relationship. So if something is increasing, assume that it's going to continue increasing at the same relative rate. If something is decreasing, it's going to continue to decrease at the same relative rate. So if they give you a new data point, all you're doing is just kind of following your line, following the curve, and figuring out where this new data point would fall. More complicated than that are new variables. So new variable would be something that hasn't been tested but it's something that you should be able to still predict what would happen to it. So, for instance, if we're talking about, um, let's say we're dropping different objects off a building and we're trying to figure out how fast they fall, etc. Um, it could say, like, and it gives you a table that has, you know, the height of the building, the size of whatever these objects are, their shape, and their weight, let's say, and then it gives you how fast they fall, if they're bouncy at all, how many times they bounce, that sort of thing. Um, so it could say, like, if I have an object that is twice as heavy as object number two, um, you know, what would the approximate time be for it to fall? And so you'd be able to look at the table, figure out what the relationship is every time the weight doubles, what happens to the time, and then you would answer from there. And again, all of this sort of theoretical questions will make a little bit more sense when we actually look at a passage together, which we will do, um, you know, after we kind of cover the types of questions that we are going to see. Okay, so... That's trends. So you just need to be able to figure out as one thing increases, what happens to another. If I double this, you know, do I double something else? That sort of thing. So relationships and then being able to put new information into the same tables, equations, etc., and trying to figure out what happens to it. Okay, and then the next one would be reasoning. So for this, you got to put your thinking cap on a little bit because reasoning is all about your ability to analyze information and to figure out why the experiment was done the way it was and what could be done next. So um, this is, you know, they'll ask you basically, 
why did the researchers set it up this way? Why did the researchers do this particular thing? So again, they're never going to ask you what was the control of the experiment, but they will say things like, um, you know, why did the researchers raise the temperature 10 degrees and then wait 20 minutes to take a reading? So, you know, the reason behind that is if I'm trying to get a reaction based on temperature, if I raise it 10 degrees, then 20, then 30, as fast as I just said it, you're not going to get an accurate reading of anything. Um, because whatever it is that you're testing for probably hasn't had enough time to react to the temperature change. So the reason is you're, you're trying to, you know, make a nice controlled experiment. You're trying to make sure there's adequate time for variables to change. And that's basically what you would end up answering. So why is it set up in this way? Why did they use the variables they did? You know, what was going on? Um, the next thing that they can ask you about is basically controls versus variables. Um, they won't, again, say controls or independent variable, etc. Um, but basically, you need to be able to identify what changed and what stayed the same. So when you're looking at your tables, you're going to take note of what kinds of things did the experimenters um, you know, intentionally vary. So what were they in charge of changing? And then what happened as a result? And you're also going to take note of things like, oh, in all three experiments, they keep the temperature the same. Or in all three experiments, they keep the pressure the same. So that's part of your control. They're trying to keep everything the same except the few things that they're going to change. And little note, pretty much all of the research summary passages are going to be based on controlled experiments because honestly it's the best and easiest way of, you know, testing for one or two variables and figuring out what happens. So, um, controls versus variables. And then the last one, and this tends to drive people crazy. So, you know, try not to, try not to be too scared of this type. It's not as bad as you think it is, is the new experiment. So what I mean by new experiment is you'll have two or three experiments. They already give them to you and you read them, you know, answer questions, etc. And at some point you might happen upon a question that says, um, you know, what variable should the scientists test next? Okay. So, seems like that's super open-ended and they could test whatever they want, but that's not actually true. So, when you see a new experiment question, you need to ask yourself, what has been partially tested or not tested but mentioned? So, you don't want to pick anything that they haven't talked about at all, because that's just out of scope, it's not going to be relevant. And you don't want to pick something that has been fully tested. So you want a non-fully tested but relevant new topic. So for instance, um, let's say that, let's say that uh, we're trying to figure out how to form a particular, a particular liquid. So we're trying to figure out how to perform, um, find a particular liquid or a particular solid, etc. So we're trying to form a substance. So uh, we're looking at chemical reactions and under what conditions they happen. So let's say we know that we add substance A and B and we will get C under some conditions. We could test different conditions. So temperature, uh, we could test pressure, we could test if pH is related to it. We could test if we need a third substance. Um, and our answer would be any one of those things that we already talked about that didn't quite form what we wanted. So that got partially there, but not quite. So just remember, new experiment equals something not fully tested. Okay, so those are pretty much the main types of questions you're going to see. Um, as you can see, there's three basic ideas, and then there's little sub-questions among those. But the big thing is you need to be able to understand what's going on in the figures, understand the trends, and understand why experiments are set up the way that they are.
And that actually is a big reason behind uh, the way that we're going to read passages. So we'll go over the way to read passages, and then we'll actually get to see a real passage, and we'll work through it together. We'll apply, you know, what we know about how to read passages, and also we'll identify types of questions, um, you know, especially the ones that are going to be a little more difficult to deal with, like the new experiment reasoning and the new variables trends kind of questions.